What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are getting ready for the championship round on Lake Fork, but I'm gonna give you guys my top five picks for the month of March. Hold on. Got a few of them tied on right here. Things are changing. This is a good transition time. Pre-spawn is here. Let's dive into it right now. Let's go. We're here in Mexico. We are in the Dominican Republic. So I'm gonna tell you a couple different tips that have helped me over the years. Jacob Wheeler makes history. Alright, so I thought about this one a little bit, and uh, there's a lot of different baits you can choose in the month of March. They're definitely biting. Um, but I really focus a lot of this for some of the guys that are ultimately fishing the waters. A lot of the lakes around the country, we've had a lot of rain, starting to have a warming trend, and there's one thing that also ultimately happens. A lot of the fish start to move from those channel banks, um, sort of bluff end banks or bluffy banks, especially in the south. Um, to more of the flatter stuff, flatter points, flats in the back of pockets. Those places become um, very productive. And, and that's a lot of times the water temperature goes up, the shad start to move up back in the backs of the pockets. So my number one bait for that is going to be a lipless crankbait. Right here is an Arashi vibe. Um, red's always a great color when the water's stained. Um, I'll throw still like whites or like this is, a, this is like sort of a muted chartreuse. Um, a lot of times if I feel like the, the fish are really focusing on shad and not biting a red one, I'll actually throw this guy right here just because I feel like a little white or like a really low chartreuse hue is pretty solid and that tends to catch quite a few fish now reds come in a lot of different variations and this guy right here got gloves on right now this guy right here was a more cleaner water and this guy's a little bit more brighter for like dirtier water so sort of transition between the two are we okay with this? Okay, so that was number one pick. Number two, I'm gonna say, is your zero to four foot zone. Okay, zero to four foot, um, still a crankbait, stained water. One that does not get talked about a lot, but is probably one of my absolute favorites, is a DT4. The reason I pick a DT4 is it has a little bit more of a wider wobble. So you have like an OG crankbait, like a slim or a tiny, that tends to be better when the, the fish are less aggressive. This is the best time of year for vibration. The fish are very, they're, they're aggressive. They're the most aggressive they're gonna be because a lot of times what happens is, these fish have not seen a lure in quite some time. Those fish have been out in the middle of the lake, chasing bait, out suspended in no man's land, and they're finally coming to the banks and they're finally pulling up into these pockets and places. Now, same thing, I sort of have the contrast of two different baits, or two different colors. I have Demon, which is more of a brighter color when the water's really stained, and then if the water's a little bit cleaner, that's when I throw that root beer color. Still orange in the belly, crawdad baits, crawdad colors seem to be the best for me overall, and I still have a white one over here as well. So something white, so the shad pattern, they're really on the shad, that's from sort of the one, two, three. All right, taking the gloves off. You know, one thing you're always gonna have to have is a jig, sort of a, a half ounce jig is sort of what I go with, seven, seven, three heavy action rod, you know, 17 pound line, where you can pitch it, flip it around the stuff. I don't transition quite yet to soft plastics. I feel like March, they're starting to push up to potentially spawn, but they're not quite there yet. So a jig is still my number one lure for at least pitching and flipping around. Now, I also will drag this on little secondary places. If your water's a little cleaner, you might move that out in that eight to 12 foot, your fish might just pre-spawn a little bit shallower. And the jig might be best for you. Throw your favorite soft plastic trailer. This one's a green pumpkin with more of like green pumpkin hue. Um, if your water's dirty, go to black and blue. Just sort of transition it or a black, even a black jig. Sometimes I like a black jig with a blue sapphire chunk. That seems to work pretty well too. Okay, so number three, or number four, my fault. Number four on the list is a jerk bait. Now, if your water's still clear right now, this one is a Rappel Husky Jerk. I like this guy a lot when the water's pretty clean. Um, it's more of a clear back. Now, you have to transition to your colors from ultimately what your water clarity is. The dirtier the water, the more white or chartreuse or table rock shad, stuff like that's going to work. The clearer the water, the more translucent. and the brighter the day, the more translucent. Sometimes you might have clear, super clean water um, or super stained, or a little bit stained water, um, a foot, foot and a half visibility, and you might need to go to a translucent bait because it's high sun, no wind, and those fish are harder to trick. So that's why I picked that little husky jerk right there. Um, you can throw like a local special, you can throw multiple different baits out there. There's, there, But I, I went to a little shallower lip because of where I'm at right now. Um, a lot of the fish are a little bit more, they're suspended, they're a little shallower. So, But you sort of depend, you change your bait according to what you're ultimately fishing, the depth zone they're fishing. If you're in a super clean water, typically they're gonna be a little bit deeper. If you're in a little bit more stained water, those fish will pre-spawn in a little bit shallower water. And that's why I'm picking that little bit shallower lip. Husky jerk 
work just like that right there. So that it is my number four. Last but not least is a good old spinner bait. Now this is a one ounce uh, accent spinner bait. I'm not gonna say this is gonna be my number one pick. I'm gonna say a three eighths, probably a half ounce ding. Um, ding special, probably spring ding is probably gonna be the number one I'm gonna pick for the stained water. Vibration is key, okay? So this is the month when the water warms up and you have warm rain, go back to the pockets, you're gonna have warm running, okay? A spinner bait can be the best bait you can possibly pick up this time of year. Um, you normally, typically I'll have that orange kicker blade um, with an Indiana blade, or I'll start throwing like a double willow spinner bait. A double willow spinner bait will actually have a lot of vibration that a lot of these fish do not see. Um, all, I mean, or, I'm not gonna say do not see, but don't, people think that you have to throw a big Colorado or a big thumping blade, but a vibration of double willows actually have quite a bit of vibration in and of themselves. So don't be afraid to throw a double willow in stained water. It still catches them just as good. You have a little bit more flash um, than you will with an Indiana or a Colorado. So this depends on the fish that given day, but I'll sort of transition between multiple multiple different ones. If the water's super clean, again, go more translucent, go more natural. If the water's a little bit more stained, chartreuse, chartreuse and white, stuff like that is where I'm gonna roll with. Um, and I'm gonna put a trailer on it, swim bait, or something like, a, just some sort of like, little, maybe even a crawl, if you're trying to keep that bait up, crawl's really good for that as well. So that is my top five baits, championship round out here on Lake Fork. Wanted to get that to you guys ASAP. So hopefully your fishing goes great in March. February has been pretty dang good for me. I'm hoping it's just as good in March. We'll see you guys on the next one.